just as an example of a sort of a fortuitous thing that came out of basic biology in my own research, I did my dissertation up at Monteverdi on fruit-eating birds and fruiting plants. And of course, once you see a resplendent quetzal, you have to drop everything and study that. So that's what I was one of the species I studied. And watching them over the course of the year feed on loraceous fruits, members of the avocado family, I realized that they were tracking these different species that were in fruit at different times of the year, and some were high elevation species of plants, some were low elevation species, and this was pulling the birds up and down the mountain. And this was something actually people hadn't realized. They assumed that there was a period during the year where the birds just got quiet and mm -hmm. vanished into the <laughs> woods. Um, but in fact, they were very conspicuous. They were just down in the dry forest. They're eating. And they were eating <laughs> loraceous fruits. So that basic biological curiosity-driven question led to changes in the design of the reserve that was established in part to protect animals like Quetzals. So now corridors go from very low elevation on the Pacific mm -hmm. side up and over the divide in Monteverde into the Atlantic lowlands. Um, and of course, bellbirds, another species that I studied in the late 70s, early 80s, is an even more dramatic example of an altitudinal migrant. Mm -hmm.